You got it locked on rhodium radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in the motherfucking house. So right about now. And I say, yo, Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play. And don't shit mix by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth, I like concert. Now I like the motherfucking rodeo. Buying a tape or two, that's what the hell I do. You don't like Tony A, well, fuck you, this is a game. And I'm in it. Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute with a right, left, right, making you sick. And then you see Tony A is on the mix. Tony A. Tony A. When you're ready, go. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 218. I want to thank everybody who uh, logged in, everybody on the live chat, everybody who liked, subscribed, shared, commented, whatever. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to give a shout out once again to Chicano Brand Clothing. They blessed me with this sweater. They gave me a red one, and they also gave me a blue one. I'm going to support the blue one, possibly in my next show. So, uh, Chicano Brand, thank you very much. Thank you for looking out. Also, I want to give a shout out to my boy, SF40s. Uh, he dropped a uh, an album actually dropped an album as a 40 you guys want to buy it uh, I'll have an ad for this on Sunday but if you guys want to get a hold of him and purchase it hit him on Instagram on his as a 40s Instagram page and he will uh, DM him and he will send it to you so I'm promoting I'm showing love as a matter of fact me and him are going to be working at the beginning of the year on an EP. So it's official. Tony A. S. 40s I'll be producing an EP for him. Other than that, continue to submit submit your music at rodeonradio at gmail.com. Uh, submit your music, your videos, and a short bio. Greatly appreciate it. And we will book you. Uh, most likely, if I do book you, it'll probably be maybe late January because that's how booked up I am. So... Other than that, you know, once again, I want to thank everybody for submitting the music, everybody for tuning in. But without further ado, this is someone that many of you for like the past year have been requesting. And he's here in the motherfucking building. None other than Sun Doobie of Fun Dubious. <laughs> thank you, man. The wizard. Word up. How you doing, my brother? Good, brother. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege. Once again, man, just thank you, brother. You know what? I didn't know that you watched Rodian Radio, bro. I am, man. I'm a big, I'm a big YouTube head, man. So you know, man. You know, I'm addicted to all that social media stuff. I'll be honest, I wasn't with it in the beginning, but man, look how it's took over, man. Yes, yes. I can't believe it. So, you know, man. Um, man, it's kind. Of, you're kind of like my um, Happy Days and Brady Bunch for the, <laughs> for the evening. You know what I'm saying? So just thank you, brother. I got you know content to come home to. So you know, I apologize if I if I cut anybody off on the streets, man. I'm just want to get home and watch my rodeo radio. You know what's up? So. That's dope. That's dope, man. Thank, <laughs> thank you, man. you. You know, I, I wanted to ask you before we get into who Sun Doobie is. Uh, first of all, I like to say people know that I'm a huge football fan. Are you a big sports guy? Yeah, I, I'm pretty much a. a I, I just I'm one of those guys that I, I mastered. I tried to master sports, and when I was real young, you know, even watching it, and I used to play, and I used to, you know, I used to place bets and stuff like that, and I, I was I was I was pretty good, so good that I had to like step away. You know what okay. I'm saying? And, and and it's fun to always come back. That's what I like about it. And nothing's changed. The fans are still the same and the people are are, are you know still uh, you know loyal as, as ever. So yeah. Right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite football team if you have one. Um my favorite football team would be the Jets. Really? Yeah, the Jets. Okay. Have you paid attention to them this year so far? No, not yet. I haven't got. I've been busy, man, and I've been in the studio. So no, I haven't. Been, I've been. I haven't peeped anything. And um, you know, um, the last what I've heard, you know, it was here over here in in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard too much. I don't know okay. what's going on yet. Favorite uh, uh, basketball team would be the Lakers. Lakers always. Baseball. Uh, Dodgers. 
Okay, okay. And uh, um, and you, that's personal. You know, it was the Yankees, but I seen what the Dodgers went through. And, um, you know, um, when they play, I thought I thought they should have won against Houston back in 2017. But that, but now 2020, I mean, you know, who's going to argue? You know, we'll take what we can get. So, yeah, for that. And besides, Dodgers are from Brooklyn originally. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, speaking of Brooklyn, you're originally from Brooklyn. Yeah, Greenpoint Hospital. That's right. County of Kings right there, Williamsburg. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. now, let me ask you this. Okay, born in Brooklyn, to how long before you moved out this way? Not too long. Um, sh- my my mom um, came out here, um, you know, like I said, you know, it wasn't a lot of opportunity at that time in New York. My dad has just got a job in Brooklyn, and um, my mother's family wanted her to fly back to Puerto Rico to um, take care of the um, family business out there. But my mom didn't want to do that. And at that time, um, in the mid-70s or in the early 70s, everyone in New York was coming to California. So everyone was like, yo, for a better life. You know, because L.A. at that time, corrupt cops, the heroin had just took over. That was like the crack over there. It was just a lot of bad shit in New York at that time. And my mother was like, you know, if I'm going to raise my son, I'm not going to raise him in this, man. I'm going to raise him, you know, and in, in better. And, and her, and her um, aunt told her, my, my, my aunt, my second aunt told her, come out to Los Angeles. And then she came out here and... Um, my mother um, got hired right away as as a nurse, you know, for a local hospital. So, you know, and, um, you know, it was like it was like a dream, you know, because I, I came to L.A. and and uh, she took me to Disneyland. So I, was like, I saw Mickey Mouse and I said, oh, forget it, man. That was it. I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was too young to remember most of it. I just remember. Um, Los Angeles was just beautiful in the 70s. I just remember um, the, the the bushes were just very, very manicured and very the hedges were very, uh, right. you know, remember that, man? And yes. I said, man, and and, and, what, and the, we had the RTD, you know, yeah. we remember the big equitable building out there in Koreatown, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, um, 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 like I said, we had the Forum, you know, right, and the right. Lakers at that time, and we had a lot of, we had the Radiotron, and um, of course, K Day and Glendale, and um, I was break dancing when I came out here. I didn't have a job. I was break dancing right there on Highland and Hollywood, and I would be a popper uh, for this uh, break dance group called Crash Crew, oh. and they were from um, you know Hollywood High. I was I, at that time. Um, I was trying to hang. I was going to Bancroft. I was going to um, junior high school with DJ Lethal. And okay. um, and Charlie Tuna from J Five over yeah. at Bancroft, and that's over there on Santa Monica and Los Palmas. For, for people that may not know, DJ Lethal House of Pain. Excuse DJ. me, yeah, DJ Lethal of House of Pain, um, uh, Everlast from um, um, Soul Assassins, and also from Ice T the Syndicate yeah. when he did songs like I Got the Knack and um, 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 Syndication. Okay, so when you moved out here, about how old were you? Um, I was about. Only about five, about five years okay, old. Okay, about yeah. five. What, yeah. what, what uh, um, uh, junior high school, today's middle school, what junior high school did you attend out here? Uh, the junior high I attended out here was Bancroft. Bancroft, Bancroft Junior High School, um, right by Paradise, the club called Paradise 24, uh, or the arena uh, by, by Santa Monica, right down the street. Okay. I remember that fucking junior high school because I hated the um, security there. Mr. Simpson, he hated um, hip hop. Or he hated um, break dancers, and he didn't like us trying to do um because we would try to get a, a backspin in right between classes, you know, just to show off to the homies, you know, just to show them the new moves before we go into third period. I, I mean, let's be honest, break dancing at that time was it, bro? Yeah, like, if you just all you needed were fat laces and a black book, and you was good. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then if you had the Cazelles, well, oh. then you were like on another level then. Especially if you had the Cazelles. Yeah, if you had the Cazelles, you know, because, I, I, you know, you, we would go to Crenshaw Swap Me and you can get them, you can buy, because at that time we were buying the Louis Vuitton, uh, the Gucci reversible belts, remember? Right. From Crenshaw Swap Me and we would just take the um, Crenshaw bus. And um, I was living in East Hollywood, so I had to catch it right there off of Wilshire because the Crenshaw bus would um, turn right there off of Wilshire and um, um, Western. Uh-huh. So um, I, I'm to giving you details now. And we would just, you know, it was just, um, man, we would, I, I was a graffiti, I was a tagger, you know, so that was what I would just tag. I would just tag Sun 
And I remember those days, yeah. You know, now, now let me ask you this, because I like to ask this question to everyone. Some people always say, you ask a lot of the same questions. Everybody has a different story, bro, so calm down. So I ask these questions because it helps me see what molded the artist that I'm talking to. For an example, you came out here with your mom. What type of music did your mom play at home that you used to listen to growing up? Oh, man, my mother was one of those, like, Americanized Puerto Rican women. So she was into, like... You know, she was like into Barbara Streisand. Okay. You know, she was into that emotional, you know, stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I would laugh. But don't get me wrong, though. Um, my mother was, a, um, you know, she, she would tell you she was a fan of salsa, you know, okay. salsa music, you know, when it was gangster. You know what I mean? It was, you know, it was when the, um, the South Americans were all in New York and they had a lot of money and they were taking the girls. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, my mother knows all that. She knows all about, you know, Tito Puente and Willie Colon and, you know, El Malo and all those, de you know, those uh, salsa days, you know, yeah. you know, the, you know, those were the, it was fun, you know, because the girls would get dressed up, the guys would get in the suits and the gold chains. And, you know, that was the light, that was the culture, you know, you know, at night to end, you know, if you got caught with a little bit or whatever like that, you had the money to buy yourself, uh, to bail yourself out, man. Right. And the cops were hating it, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. yeah. the, 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 those type of dudes that my mother was running, dudes would have suitcases full of money. So, yeah, bro. Toma, yeah. That's it. That's all it was. And um, after my mother got tired of all that, that's when, you know, she had me. And, you know, she's like, a little, she's blown out. And she's like, I'm, I'm out of this. I'm done. I had enough in New York. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, okay. you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, you know, a uh, uh, club tw uh, 54, club 50, you know what I'm yeah. saying? All those days. So she lived all that. My mother's done all that. You know what I'm saying? From Brooklyn and Manhattan to the Bronx. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So my dad is originally from the Bronx. But now he's in Brooklyn, so he's a Brooklyn nigga now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a Brook, so I got to claim Brooklyn, too. I can't do the Bronx. You know, so, uh, you know, I mean, we got family. I, st I still got family in the Bronx. So, you know what I'm dope. saying? But I don't mess with them because they're crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I love you, and I don't want no one to hurt me in the family reunions. <laughs> I love you guys. You know that. Stop. <laughs> now, 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 let me it's ask an you interview. This. It's yes, an interview. Exactly. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, did you... The reason why I'm bringing this up because I popped first before I started breaking. Is that how it was for you? Or did you do both at the same time? No, I tried to, um, I tried to break first. I sucked. <laughs> I fucked myself up and I just started popping. But I'm good at popping. You can't fuck with me. I'm a skinny dude. So, you know, and my popping teacher was this guy named Tyrone up in Bancroft. And um, he was amazing. This dude would pop his chest out like oh, he shit. had like these iron. Huh? I said, oh, shit. Yeah, you know, he was. I kid you not. But he would stick his tongue out. And I was I used huh? to win all the talent shows in my school. No I won shit. Bancroft. I did a Fairfax. I won all the talent shows and I won through popping. And how I won is I would I would wear the shell toes with sweats, a Nike uh, running top um, with a New York uh, Yankee cap yeah. and the white gloves. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, of course. And we would win every time. Of course. Like the Supreme Team. Yes. Remember how we used to check out the Supreme Team in the in the yeah. graffiti books? Yeah. I would dress just like them. And I'd win every time. And I I did just like um, you know, New York City Breakers, just like that. You know what I'm saying? But hold on, hold on. The Mexicans were the best at popping. Over here, Oz Rock, I would see him at the radio chart and we would study, you know, those type of dudes. It was um, it was um animation from soul train and os rock because he was latino he was a you know rasa so right, right. you know what i'm saying but the mexicans were um um you know if, if you um saw breaking you know the mexican dude turbo right. you know Tur who was going against turbo yeah that dude's insane bro yeah that have you seen that fool of course that dude's insane yeah so those type of poppers are a whole different league homie those dudes you know they do it for a living so yeah you know um i i was trying to um you know, break dance, man, I couldn't. So Tyrone just said, hey, dog, you just break dance. <laughs> and, and, I mean, you just pop. Well, and that was it. Because, man, I wanted to break. I had the tile. I had everything, man. You were I, ready to go. I was ready to go, man. <laughs> I have to ask you this because to me, this, these we stories. We would do it like a religion. After we would leave junior high school, we would, my friend tagged Mech. And he was part of another crew because we would run with WCA, KGB, all those groups. I remember I used to run with, um, uh, um, Kelly, Pyro, and Rival, you know, and our writer's bench would be right there on Fairfax and Santa Monica. 
dope. dope. Yeah. So I have to ask you this because I only been there twice and I look for people that were there. We talked to Radiotron. I, I was given the honor to interview Carmelo Alvarez, the owner of Radiotron, and his daughter, Ashley Alvarez. And they're making a movie of his life. That's dope. But now, can, can you... Long overdue. They should have been did that already. Yeah. 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 Can you rewind a little bit and tell me your experience when you first went into Radio Trauma? How did you hear of it? Oh, I was scared. Um, Tyrone said, yo, we're going to this club and it's all break dancers. We may have to battle folks. So get ready. So I practiced in front of the mirror for like two weeks before I went to the Radiotron. And I make sure that my gear was right. Everything was right. I mean, you know, Puerto Rocks, we're Latinos. We, you know, we right. take this shit seriously. I believe that hip hop is a religion and you and me belong to like a royal priesthood. So we took it real seriously. And I had the rope. I had the glasses, everything. So when we got up there, um, there were some fools that we had to battle. Um, these guys were from Canoga Park, but they came all the way from the valley to battle us at the Radiotron. So when we got there, um, um, the first dude we put, um, when we first battled them, we got there, and I said, "Man, this is fucking dope because of the graffiti and the tags yeah. and everything." And you know, and then every, and then I was like, "Fuck that! Let me get my tag up." So I did my little shit, I did my thing, and I put my shit away, and you know, nobody saw nothing. And um, I, the glove was there, the glove, Chris, the glove, yeah. And I couldn't believe, you know, because I seen them in movies, of course. So that was like the first movie star I saw, and I said, "I'm chilling. I'm not going anywhere, dog. This is what I want to <laughs> do for the rest of my life, and that's that." And then the dudes came in, and we saw the battle, and but we won. And um, the first dude we put out for popping was this Korean dude. He acts black. His name is David. And he's dope. Oh, he's sick. He has this one popping move where he looks like he's turning a knob, but his foot goes down and he goes down like this, like a low rider. Oh, shit. Oh, it's sick. You know what I'm saying? And then he's got the tut. He's He does all the, the everything tut. Yeah. The whole shit. And um, he does that, that, that. He does the Bugs Bunny, you know the the, the bouncing yeah. Bugs Bunny. You know when you see the cartoons like that. He did that. We and and I didn't. I wasn't even out yet. I hadn't even come out yet. And I got my moves ready. And then Tyrone comes out, but he does some bullshit moves just to make it look like we're weak. And they come out, and they got this one white dude. He's pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? He's whatever his name is, Cassidy, whatever. And and you know he's doing his thing. You know, but um, you know um, I come out. And I, I just, I have it, this energy is just, um, I explode and I just do my popping thing and everybody's like, oh, oh, and I feed off that. It's okay. I'm not the best, man. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I could pop. I, it sounds weird, man. I'm an old ass brother now <laughs> saying this shit, you know, so you see, you know what I'm saying? Right. My maturity is like telling me, stop, doobie, stop talking, <laughs> stop talking right now. You're talking about popping, which happened 40 years ago. Just stop, please, right, please. Right. So I'm just like. Yo, man, we won, man. And that whole night, man, I learned a lot, man. I, st I studied break dancers. I studied a lot of uh, rappers that went up on the mic, too. Um, but um, as far as that, it was a lot of uh, K-Day guys that I met from K-Day there. And I, I'm, that's how I got into the K-Day through the Radiotron. And then I said, I want to go see K-Day. I want to go up to K-Day and sign the door and, and do all that. Bullshit. Okay, now, now tell me about that experience. That was a dope experience because... Uh, um, um, like at that time, um, Dr. Dre, when he did the first mix on K day, and then after that, it was, um, Joe Cooley yeah. and then, um, M walk. Oh, and yeah. then, uh, um, um, they were playing songs and doing records that you couldn't buy in the record store. Yes. You can only hear them on K day. And it was a late night coming from the club, either world Dawn worlds or Skateland with yeah. Julio G. And when I heard Julio G, man, I, I was like, man, Julio is amazing. I thought he was from the East coast. Yeah. Yeah. You remember? Cause uh, you know, Julio looks like he's Puerto Rican almost. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and then when I, I was running, you know, with the blacks at that time and we were doing so much breakdown. And, um, you know, so they invited us to K-Day and uh, we came up in there. But I was such a square and I was just like, you know, I had my Benetton shirt. Remember Benetton? The, who, come on, who remembers Benetton? I bought my shirt at the Beverly Center. Remember when the Benetton <laughs> store was on the first floor? And at that time we had Oscos. Remember the club? Oscos, yeah. Oscos where they filmed, um, thank God it's Friday. So, you know, and I went there. It was a rolling 60s crip party. Oh, and that was my first time I ever been to a, a crip party. And... Um, 
man, it was crazy. They were shooting, you of know, course. and and a dude had to. Um, they were all there, you know, with their football jerseys, and they had a thirty-eight right there. And I, I was like, man, this shit is amazing. I was <laughs> like, yes. And Davy D from Def Jam performed. Davy D, you're all the best. Yes. Rock this beat, cause uh, uh, so uh, 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 uh. of course. And um, I just remember getting back on the bus, Beverly, the Beverly bus. Going back home, back to Silver Lake. And, uh, you know, I was just like, man, hip hop. That's it. That's it. Hip hop. Huh? I fell in love, brother. I think for me. King Day 24 7. 24 7. Man. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And we had that shop right on Vine and Hollywood, Breakers Only. Remember? <laughs> and that was it, man. And then forget it. Then um, I followed all the movies like um, Beach Street, Crush Groove, Wild Styled, and of course, um, Style Wars. Style Wars. Uh, there was one out here which me and Chris the Glove, when I interviewed him here, he shared with me that he believes because of dating, uh, that, that uh, when I, meaning that he dated the first hip hop documentary. It was called Breaking and Entering. And he said it was in the 83 before uh, 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 the ones you just mentioned, uh, B Street, Style Wars, uh, um, you know, and I was like, really? And he goes, yeah. And yeah. I, re I remember because Boogaloo Shrimp Turbo from Breaking is from my neighborhood and, and uh, they filmed them here. Yeah. And, but it was called Breaking and Entering. And then there was another one that was made for TV and it was called The Pilots. Thank you. There was a lot of material and content that been documented, but a lot it's not popular. Right. And they've went out of a, a lot of uh, they've gone out of their way to suppress a lot of that content. Yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, if you can catch it, man, pull out your iPhone and record that shit with your phone, homie, because that's probably the last time you'll probably see that. Yeah. So I always encourage people to, you know, try to find as much as you can. But I'd always tell people, too, the brain's a magnet. So if you think of it long enough, it's going to come your way, brother. If you order it in your head, your order's coming, brother. Right. <laughs> your order's coming, brother. Trust me, brother. You, you know, you know what, one thing that I love about those times, man, is that, for an example, I went one day, uh, my brother is the one that introduced me to DJ Joe Cooley. I was maybe 14 years old when I first met Dude, him. Dude, Joe Cooley was dope until I met, until I seen Tony G. Of course. Of when course. Tony G, bro, I never seen no shit like that. And then when I seen Muggs, I, ne I, I didn't even leave Muggs aside. I stood right. right, I didn't, like I lived right next to him with a sleeping bag next to Muggs. It, it's cause, yeah. okay, you could look at a DJ blend and scratch and say he's dope. But when you look at the guys that you just mentioned, they're like on a totally different other level, man. No, nah, when I saw Tony G, it was it was an experience because you're talking like, you know, that type of stuff. You right. know what I'm saying? You're talking real DJ. Um, you're talking just sitting there, just staring at the turntables. And you don't even know, you don't even have a turntable. You know what I mean? Because if you, you're thinking about what you're going to do when you buy that, you know. And at that time, that's all we cared about was those two 1200s. Yes. And at that time, they cost them. We didn't have the money to pay for yeah. those. So, you know, when I when I was lucky to, to meet Ralph M. And Ralph's like, I got two 12s, man. That, that ain't nothing. I got it. And Ralph was like, he was clean. Ralph was, um, I mean, just clean. I mean, ponytail clean. He was just, his, his style was just clean. It, just meticulous yeah it was meticulous it was just it was oh you know his shirt even his sneakers his pants were tapered he was into the skinny jeans even before <laughs> these niggas he was just all the girls he had them at fairfax i remember that shit you know what i'm saying yeah ralph was just a dope motherfucker and when and he was transferring from la high to fairfax and I was excited the day Ralph when I found out he was coming because I knew he was coming to Fairfax before he even came. I heard, I heard, I was like Ralph coming here, and I was a fan of Ralph because he was a part of this cool, uh, this album called The Union, and M Walk was part of that union. Yeah, of course. And um, M Walk would he did our prom, so that's how I studied M Walk at our prom, and and I studied the whole, and I was right. a big Tone Loke fan, you know, Wild Thing, the 808. You know, at that time nobody was doing the 808 except who Mantronics. Right. right. You remember, you know, in right. those days. Of course, they're, they're, these, this 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 I mean, I miss all that shit. And I um I remember when Mantronics did the Joy Sims, dump dump dump, da da dump dump, da da dump dump, da da dump dump, da da dump. I miss all that stuff. And I saw how it changed hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I saw how run, it went from Run DMC to LL Cool J to the Beastie Boys to Houdini. 
you know, five minutes of funk. Freaks come out at night to UTFO to beep jump Peter. Remember uh, Roxanne and uh, the real Roxanne and Full Force. Yeah, remember that. Of course, you know what I'm saying. Full I force mean, and Howie T. Howie T. You know what I'm Howie's saying. Howie teed off. <laughs> Thank you. Don't and and the go go beats. Remember the go go yeah, beats. Yeah. Come on, son. You take in New York. You take in Miami. Remember the two live crew. Of course. Remember, get, get, get a girl. Throw that D. <laughs> throw that D. Remember, throw that D. Of course. All that. Come on, man. Don't Antoinette. Remember. Of course. And I was raised with that. Remember Tricky T? Tricky T. Remember that? T Tricky what T. else? What else? How about how about Lati? This cut's got flavor. <laughs> Remember from the flavor unit. Right. I mean, I miss all that. Um, Gangstar, I manifest, all that stuff. I'm talking the source when it was just a letter. It wasn't even a magazine yet. You know what I'm saying? Now, now let me ask you this, and I have to ask you since you're bringing it up. If you have the top five East Coast rappers or East Coast groups, who would they be? I, I, I know it's kind of hard, but... I can't do that. I'm. Mean, it's too many. I mean, because you're combining this new era with that new era. Now, if I was to go old school on you... Okay. If I was to go old school on you, um, I, I'm going to have to go number one uh, um, because not so much just the career and how they handled it, run DMC. Yes, yes. You know, if it comes to that real black and red, it's run DMC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And rest in peace, Jam Master J. Rest Who was peace. better than Jam Master J? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, um, and um, I'm going to have to say next with that, LL Cool J. Yes. LL, come on, man. Ain't nobody. That's Mr. Rock the Bells himself. Yeah. No one can take that from him. Yeah. And then third would be Houdini. Definitely Houdini. Houdini. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I should have said this before all of them. Curtis Blow and the DJ, and the, and the DJ for the group Curtis Blow DJed for the Fat Boys. The fat, boys. the fat Boys. You know what I'm saying? No one gives the Fat Boys no. And Hold the up. Fat Boys was monster when they first came out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The Fat Boy. But Curtis Blow, to me, was the best because in this, even in 79, you know, even in 77, I mean, Curtis, there was nothing that can touch Curtis Blow. In junior yeah. high school, I would probably say that Curtis Blow was my favorite uh, uh, MC of all time. And I, I finally, I want to say 1997, I was at Peppers. Remember Peppers? Of course. Okay. City of Industry. Right. So I'm sitting there and I'm there. One I of love my Curtis, man. His spirit is just beautiful. Yes, it is. Curtis Blow is amazing, yes. man. If you ever get to meet Curtis Blow, I mean, he's one of these MCs that he's done everything that all your favorite MCs have done, but he doesn't have a big head. Yes. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and my boy's going to get in a drink and I'm just like cool, having a cool time. And, you know, it's all rasa. <laughs> All of a sudden, I see Melly Mel walk in with a white oh, nice suit. Oh, forget it. And yeah. I saw Curtis Blow behind him. And in my mind, I look at him like, what the hell? Does anybody see this? Oh, C man. These are my childhood idols. You no. know, are my superheroes. No, heroes. forget it. Melly Mel. Those, I've heard of the Mikey D stories. Yeah, I remember those days. So yeah. both of them walk in, and I just tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, bro, you guys don't know who in the hell I am, but can I tell you guys a story? And I just told them that since I was a kid, how I listened to them and how the impact that they had on my life. And both of them were just like, wow, man, thank you for sharing that. Especially Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow, he had the emoji hands. Before there were emojis, he was like. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, I, 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 when I first, you know, like I said, when I worked at Power 106, I was there for three years and um, he had his show there. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I was there working night times. And I was there, you know, they just hired me on the spot. You know, it was just a, a, like a joke. And I got, they gave me the job and I just, you know, we just playing around and we cool. And, but to get to meet the Curtis Blow, when I found out he was doing a show there, I waited for him and, and come through to introduce myself to him. And yo, man, Curtis is one of those dudes, man. He's one of those spirits that, you know, you, you know, you, you want to, you, you right. want to be at the end of days with him. You know what I'm saying? He's one of those, he's strong, man. 
and I love him. And you know, it's just crazy because he's from New York, but now he's in Los Angeles, yes, California. Yes, yeah. yes. So good looking. Hey, I just want to just thank you, Curtis. I love you, brother. Curtis Blow. Where we Absolutely. Up. Every yeah, time I think of legend. him, I always think of clap your hands, everybody. He started all that. <laughs> These are the pre- yo that whole shit, man. To this day, man, people do that shit in Europe. DJs do that shit in Europe, all over the world, Indonesia, Malaysia. I mean, forget it, bro. So I'm just like. Yo, South America, all that, man. They do. And I saw that, man. When I saw that, that's when I, you know, like, I, I had, you know, I have um, respect for my old school hip hop icons. But when I do my homework on, on it, it never, it baffles me just to know how much they've done and contributed to right. the hip hop industry, man. It's just amazing. Yeah. Dope, dope. Now, now, let me ask you this. Growing up, you mentioned obviously a lot, a lot of artists. One thing that a lot of West Coast, um, fans out here don't understand when they ask me who were some of your favorite artists growing up of course i would say curtis blow hell Grand yeah Master Blast, and furious five. Oh, yeah oh, yeah that's cool. like uh, mando yeah oh, of course um um uh, i said run dmc yeah uh of course the fat boys Jill. of course ll Jill. and then they usually stop me and tell me but those are all east coast and i have to remind them of my age number one then i have to remind them that that's all we had. No, no, no. But we get we had we had West Coast too. We had we had the LA Dream Team. No, 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 no. We had Rudy Paul D, Snake Puppy. Don't forget that. World on Wheels, man. Don't right, forget right. that. I, 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 I remember uh, the KRS's first show at World on Wheels. He had Crips jumping up and down, going South Bronx, South South Bronx. That was a right. come on. But um, of course we got to give it to King T, because King right. T was the first man. I mean, forget it. When bass came out on K Day, right. Come on, are you kidding me, man? You couldn't, you heard that song like 20 times in one hour. Right. Yeah, now, I mean, now, but my point Or was, Everlasting Bass. Right. Or what else was on K-Day? And the beat goes on. Dip, 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 and the beat, chip, 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 go, go, go. I mean, come on, are you kidding me? 24-7 on K-Day was just. You know, and be like, again, you turn it back off. You turn K-Day back on. All right. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, da, ha, da. Uh-huh. Rapping Duke. I'm the rapping Duke. You can't rap like that. I mean, you. I mean, we had man. We had the most creative artists in the '80s, bro. Right. But yeah. the majority. My point was coming from the East Coast uh, of art of hip hop. It was. Oh, th- That's that, true. That was my point. I gotta keep it a, okay. a buck. Yeah, you gotta keep it a buck like that. Yeah. But I have to give it up to once again, like. Some of my favorites, Mixed Master Spade. Oh, yes. Okay. Toddy T, Mixed and Master Spade. Those Toddy T. Are, and now I'm ready. There was the first Nate Dogs. Those was yes. the first singing. When we heard that and they was talking Cocoa Puffs and all, we didn't know what the fuck that was because we wasn't. We didn't know what drugs was at and that time. And by the way, we, and the beat goes on by Orbit was one of my favorite Oh, shit. forget it. Come on. Clear by <laughs> R9. R9. Right. And uh, Cybertron. Yes. Remember Cybertron? Of course. And of course, Jam On It, Nucleus. I mean, dude, that's what, and release yourself. Yo, 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 yourself. I mean, dude, Captain are you? Rock. Captain Rock. How about, how about, we're, we're only bugging. Bug, 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 bug. <laughs> Whistle. And that's all, because, man, we, that's L.A. That was L.A. You see what I'm saying? And then you have folks from Oxnard. You have folks from um, Riverside. You have fools from, from Diego. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And a little bit, you know, helped. So, right. you know, I mean, you know, because the fools would come. But come on, we let's not be honest. Let's be honest. They would come from up north, whether it be Fresno, Bakersfield. And, you know. They heard some of us, they take it back. And some of them, some of them went back. Some of them stayed. You know what I'm saying? Some of them got tattoos. Some of them, you know, said, hey, man, I'm going to try to break into the TV business or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Not us. We were musicians. We just looked at it like, y'all, Yo, y'all do your thing, man. It's all good. You know, we're going, going back to the studio, but that's it. And that's all we did. And, and that's what I love. So the West Coast is, is documented strongly yes. with hip hop, you know, as far as that, you know. And of course, you know, New York acknowledges that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, of course, man. That'll work. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a break, 10 minute break. We're going to come right back. I want to talk about who were your inspirations for you to begin to pick up the mic. We're going to go from there. So, okay, everybody, make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, and let them know that Sun Doobie, a Funk Doobie, is in the motherfucking building. We'll be back. Da ha da da ha ha ha. How you doing? It's me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright, and a lot of you know me. Know I like to smile. 
And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out. ¿Qué pasa, mi gente? El head padrino, Mellow Man Ace, right here. This is my new joint, Walk Talk, featuring my boy Young Quicks, Oxnard's finest. Ya tu sabes, mi gente. Sigan representando real hip hop aquí solamente. Keep it locked. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Gatti's, all the way from NYC. Check out my latest EP, available now on all digital platforms. Back in Cali, baby, that's right. Check me out, Miss Gatti's, at YouTube, at Instagram, at Spotify, all over. You already know it's NYC, baby. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks. Just want to let you know, I got a new single out, Down Three Times, Down 3X, featuring Baby Bash. Everywhere music is sold and streamed today. Go cop it. Add me to your playlist. Let's get it. Down, down, down. It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T chilling on Rodium Radio. Tune in, subscribe every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony A. The Wizard. West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rodium Radio right here with Tony A. The Wizard on every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A, Rodium Radio. Tune in. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and check them out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Beretta with Rhodium Radio and Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is the Puppet Master chilling with El Triste. Follow and subscribe to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the Harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one Sancho. And you're checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A. the Wizard. Check it out. 
What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. What up? This is Mr. D over at Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? This is Uncle Spliff, man, from Spliff DTV. Y'all need to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rhodium Radio with my homie, Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, you're tapping in with the Spliff City Hustlers. This is Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. the Wizard. Motherfucking legend. Make sure you fucking like, subscribe, share, do all that. Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Gang Live with Full Effect. Here at Rodeo and Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. You know what it is, boy. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rodeum Radio with my homeboy Tony A, the motherfucking Wizard. Watch those locals forever. Yo, what's up? Man, it's your boy Young Hype here at Rodeum Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. Yeah, doge. Yo, what's up? It's Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citre, inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodeo Radio, with your host, Tony A. the Wizard. What's happening? It's your boy Bobby Castro, and I'm here at Rodeo Radio with the homie Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the Mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rodeo Radio with the homeboy Tony A. the Wizard. That's right. Hey everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. What's cracking? It's the homie Crazy Boy, Blue Rain Music. You tune in to Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday, right here. What's up, everybody? This is Dali C, the Trap Queen, and you guys are listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you guys soon. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Bobby B, and you're live with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. 1212, coming to you live from the Harbor area. DJ Ralph M, rocking beats with my man, Tony A, rocking the SB1200. Let's go. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Yeller coming straight out of Compton Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. Check him out. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Got this from NYC. I'm now Saki with Tony A, the Wizard at Rodium Radio. You already know how to bring the NYC love. Hey, shout out to all of you guys. Hey, what's cracking? It's that guilty one. You're tuned in to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard, live every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe. Ah. What's going on? It's Hazard. You are tuned in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Yo, yo, this is your boy Invincible, and you are watching the Rhodium Radio show with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you're tuned in and watching. Ooh, ah. What's up, guys? This is Isabella Soul, and you're tuning in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your girl, J Rocks. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with your host, Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yo, what's up? This is Jose Homicide. You hanging out at Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. the Wizard. Like and subscribe.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 218. And I hope I didn't get the, I didn't get that wrong. 218. But we're not going to bullshit anymore. We're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with Son Duby, a fun dubious. How are you doing, hermano? Como estas? Good, brother. Just thank you for everything, man. I just want to give a big shout out to the soul assassins out there. Of course, be real. You know what I'm saying? Head honcho himself, big kahuna. Got to say also what's up to Sin Dog. You know what I'm saying? Top dog man himself. You know, got to say what's up, of course, to my big brother and um, my, my brother f- my brother from another mother forever, um, forever and ever, forever, ever? Moms. Forever, ever. You know what I'm saying? And I, of course, big shout out to House of Pain, Everlast, Lethal, of course, Danny Boy, and of course, Alchemist, Scotty Khan. I love those dudes, man, with yeah. my life, man. You know, you know what B-Real posted the other day, man? I think it was yesterday. And I was I was I was at the gym and I was taking a little break and I was just kind of going through Instagram and he posted they're gonna have a Dr. Green thumb, if I'm correct, at LAX. Yeah. Oh no, I I was I don't, I went to Block's party, his block party, uh-huh. and I met the dude that B Real is working with to make that happen. Oh dude. So it's it the, the, hey, B is serious, man. He's no. it's gonna be bomb, man. I'm telling you. You, you know it's it, busting. It's gonna be busting. Watch. It, it, and I sent I actually sent it out to my son and a couple other people and I said He's winning, and I'm gonna tell you why I sent that. Have out. you been to his stores in Selmar and no, the one I over there? Yo, them stores are insane. They're like they look like Apple stores. Insane, clean. I mean, you go right in, and the weed is, yo, B, his weed is like he fucks with that 34, 36 percent. See, I don't smoke, so I wouldn't know, but I'm sure it's good. Okay, for, <laughs> for okay, it's like this for weed smokers. I mean, the average is like maybe nineteen percent you know help you give a calm high or something or maybe 22 percent i mean the rock stars smoke 27 percent 29 b smokes like that in the 30s i i don't man that's too fucking strong man okay. that's like that's like um you know that's like that cheech and chong weed okay, okay. you know that that's like actor weed you okay. know, like Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill weed. You know, like okay. Seth Rogen weed. You know, them okay. niggas smoked that shit made in a laboratory, <laughs> you know, with scientists with face masks and shit, with gloves and shit like that. Well, he's the Dr. Green thumb. You know, they got to <laughs> put on motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, aprons on and shit like that. So, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not a weed smoker like that, but I like hanging around smelling that stuff, right. man. Yeah. But I, I have sent that out because... I told my boys, man, I'm happy that he's winning, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm the dude. kind of person, bro, when LAX? somebody wins, yeah. When, you know what I'm when saying? somebody wins, bro, <laughs> I get happy, bro. That's yeah. So. Yeah, nah, B was way ahead of us on that one. Yeah, Absolutely. I love my brother for that. He's just, like I said, um, you know, um, B is um, always doing innovative things. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, way ahead of the game, yeah, B. Now, we're going to rewind it a little bit. Yes, sir. Tell me when you first started writing how did you start? What, what what motivated you? Was it was it just the rap? Was it just the Curtis Blows, the Melly Mel's? Mugs, Mugs was Mugs. getting. Mugs was like, um, he he. I didn't have money, man. He bought me a. Um, we were walking on Hollywood Boulevard, and he bought me a computator, and he and he because he would say, I, you say a lot of fly things, but you know you forget them, and don't forget them because when we're in the studio, you need we need to remember what the you said because I used to talk like a thousand words a minute at that when I was young, I, you know I, I was raised on TV and movies. And um, I used to go to the movies by myself. So, you know, man, I was a young kid. I'm a kid. big movie guy. I used bro, to sneak so. into the movies. Okay. You know, my trick was I'd go super early and everyone was too lazy to, to, to go to the ticket counter. So I just walk right in and that was it. No one would know. And, I, and I'd be there all day, man. I would spend all day at the movies and stuff. You watch Jaws there? Yeah, of course I did, man. Exorcist? Uh, yeah, and uh, Blue Thunder. Blue Blue, and uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. Okay. You Return. remember those days? <laughs> yeah, man, everything, man. I Quest for Fever? Fire. Yeah, everything. Everything, man. I mean, um, um, I'm Lone Wolf McQuaid. I was a big Chuck Norris fan. Of course. You of know, course. And, but uh, but mostly hip-hop movies. Like, I snuck in to see Break In. I snuck into Man Chinese to see Crush Groove. I snuck into all my hip-hop Man movies. Chinese? Yeah, I snuck into that. You know, you leave the back open. You know, just, uh, just leave the back right. open. Don't close it. Yeah, and we just sneak right in and, you know. That's how we do it. I was young, man. I mean, Run DMC, man. Of Curtis course. Blow, Fat Boys. It was, that was my hip hop, you know. That was my thing. So, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You said Mugs encouraged you, but how did you meet Mugs? Oh, um, I met Mugs. Um, we were in a group called Seven Eight Three, and um, I, I was whack. I was this DJ. I was trying to be a DJ. I know. Don't laugh, man. I was just trying to, you know, man. 
It's it, DJing is hard, man. I a love lot your of people, honesty, though. But a lot of people don't know DJing is hard, man, because you have to have a certain cadence when you go back and forth. And B Real had it. I'd be jealous of B because B would practice on Muggs' turntables and B would practice. You know what I'm saying? Right. And Muggs had so many records. Once I saw how many records Muggs had, I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. Yeah, because Muggs had the most records out of anyone I've ever seen. You know, almost like two rooms full at that right, time. Right, So, and and he had everything. Muggs would get the new stuff before anybody would get it. And, um, you know, I'm um, DJing, man. I, I, I couldn't DJ, man. I, I was trying. And, you know, Brett was just like, you know, he was like, you're nice, doobie, but go home. <laughs> <laughs> go home. Just go home. And and that was it. And and then, you know, man, I, I and Muggs was starting the DJ crew and, and I wanted to be part of his DJ crew and he wouldn't let me in the part of the he was like, You're whack doobie, I can't let you in. <laughs> and I was like I was like, man, I'm getting better though, man. I'm practicing. He's like, well, give me a tape. He was just being nice to me. He was like, just give me a tape. Right. And I gave him a tape and he, he frisbeed it. He just just chunked that motherfucker. He just Man, it went so far, and I remember it broke into a billion pieces, and I, I was like, I, I think I'm gonna rap. Yeah, he was like, he's like, nah, nigga, you need to rap. You a dope, you a dope ass rapper. You just the way you, you know, the way you, the way you stretch your words, and the way you pause, and the way you just switch into something else, and go into conversations and the storytelling, and and um. So and he, he saw that in you. He he saw. I didn't see that in me. He saw it in me, and he bought me the computer. I kid you not. He bought me it, and it came with that little tape recorder, you know. Right. And I, I said a bunch of dope stuff, and um, we did a, our first song. It was an Al Green sample. I remember it went dum 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 dum, dum, dum and it was called Love and Happiness. Yeah, you know, and it would go, it would go Love and Happiness, dum 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 dum, dum. and you know, um, he got money to buy an SB twelve hundred. He didn't want to go by himself. He had ordered that Sam Ash, and he and he go Doobie, you want to you want to come with me? Cause I want to go by myself. I gotta wait. Cause at those times, remember when you had to get you had to wait. You got a ticket, and you were waiting for studio equipment for like an hour yeah. now you get it right away you right. know what i'm saying but it, so i waited with him and when we got it we took it back home we plugged it into the sp to the um sp 1200 i mean the sp um the technique 1200 and we just started to sample everything we started sampling everything we just started i mean because that was hip-hop to us right there. yeah we just started sampling everything and once we started sampling, once we, we we did the Love and Happiness Al Green, and I did that song, and um, and then I did a couple other songs like the Come Off, and we did I did everything. And around did, what year was this? Um, this was like in eighty eight, eighty nine. Okay. Okay. And um, I was graduating high school, and Muggs was picking me up from Fairfax, you know, because he wasn't going to high school, and Muggs, I was like, "You going back to high school?" He goes, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not going back there again." And I'm going, okay, so we're just doing music? Oh, we're just doing music. I was like, all right, fuck it. We're doing music. <laughs> so, you know, I was working at Subway. You know okay. what I'm saying? Making sandwiches. And, you know, and, I, and I'm just, you know, Muggs just showed me a whole new other world. And um, I was young, man. I was like, you know, like 16, 17 years old. And, you know, man, I mean, I'm 50 now. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I was a teenager, man. And it was, I was young. Man, I can't believe Subway's been around that long. I know. Fuck, man, since I, the fucking early 80s. Do you still fuck with Subway? N I, you know what? I don't because we me, we go to another deli. We have, we're, we've upgraded. <laughs> we've, okay, okay. we've upgraded. You know, we're in Marina Del Rey, so we're okay. We're upgraded. But, um, okay. you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, um, if I'm in the airport, you know, and I'm doing a show, you know, I'll grab a, a sandwich, you know, and grab and take you, it to, on the plane. Just don't get the tuna. Did you hear about that? I don't know. No, I haven't heard. I haven't okay, heard. Okay, it, it hit news that they did a test and there's no tuna in the tuna sandwich. It's just a bunch of fish. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it, that's fucked up. Because I'm not I, even in the loop, man. Yeah, I because I used know. to buy that fucking tuna sandwich all the fucking time. What is it? I don't know. It's I don't know. It probably. Nah, you know, that's scary, man. Okay, horse nah, knuckle. Nah. You're I sure? know. All right, I gotta I gotta do my homework. No, man. I'm I don't serious. know what's going on. Okay. But okay. Yeah. So no more subway. But now he, this, this is what this is what happened when, like I said, um, you know, when I first heard Kid Frost. Uh -huh. I mean, when I first heard Kid Frost. I was fucking, that dropped me to the floor because I ain't never heard a Latino rap like that in my life. And with smooth, so smooth, and with such confidence. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And the Tony G beat, that bum, 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 that, that, that pop. You know what I'm saying? And when he did the same thing for Mello, 
I was like, damn, on Menti Rosa, you still hear that pop. Because Tony just knows how to, you know, he knows how to EQ shit. Yeah. You know, it's just weird. Dope and, engineer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And when I heard Muggs doing the same shit, I was like, man, this they're creating a whole new, this is some other shit, man. And I, I'm just like, I'm waiting for the next person who's going to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember when Jelly Bean had signed Fat Joe and, you know, the Latinos were doing their own thing out there, Madonna, all this stuff out there in New York. Right. But we had our own scene out here in L.A. And I liked the, the, the what the, you know, the hip hop out here. And um, with King T and Ice T, I mean, forget it, man. They ran everything. K-Day was, you know, that, that was theirs. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And uh, meeting Evil E. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Han G, um, the Spin Masters. Right. You know what I'm saying? Spin Masters. You know what I'm saying? I missed all that stuff. And the Throwdown Twins, who were Ronnie DeVoe's um, brothers, you know, who are also rappers who were doing their thing too. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, um, there were a lot of Los Angeles um, rap artists that... Um, you don't you don't hear about that should have been promoted more. Yeah, they, you know they, what they I'm saying. Seems like people slept on them or got swept under the rug, bro. Exactly. I mean, I mean, I just remember remember Young MC. Of course. Fuck, yeah, Marvin was insane. Of course. Who the fuck can fuck with Marv? the fellas. tell us. I mean, I got no how. Remember that one? What the fuck? He was rapping off a shaft. Man, man, what that, kind of drugs was you taking? It's man, I love that fucking you know because it was just like he was doing it effortlessly. Like I mean, Delicious was rocking back man, then. The you know label. what I'm saying? And then Def Jeff, of course. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's had the voice of Jay Z before Jay Z. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the dance moves. And the and then Body and Soul. <laughs> Remember what I was saying? Body and soul. So, I mean, I, I love that. But Tone Loke, man, forget it, man, was the one that was like, he was doing the gang. And then when the two live crew came out, forget it, that get it, girl. You know, all that stuff, yeah. man. I loved all that. Mix Master, Mix, Mr. Mix. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, those dope, dudes. I mean, so I remember all that. Remember the skinny boys from Chicago? The skinny boys. I'm remember trying to remember, that? I'm trying to remember their cut, though. I mean, Tongue Twister, you know, when he first got to Loud, you know what I'm saying? Well, okay. You know, I mean, I remember those dudes, man. Those dudes were so humble when I met them, man. Those dudes were, you know, I opened up with them. And, and, and remember the Fushnickens? Of course. Yeah, man, the Fushnickens. So I remember opening up for them, um, you know, when Shaq was doing that, when did that song with them. <laughs> so, you know, we did, the, we did the Latin Pan American Festival with them. So, you know, we, we did a lot with them. And, um, you know, um, I remember I went, um, Be Real doing the Soul Assassins tour. We brought, remember when the Cosby show yeah. was popular? We brought Malcolm Jamal Warner on stage with us. Oh, no shit. He was a big Funk Dubious Cypress Hill fan too. And it was cool. We, were, we, did the, we sold out the China Club. And uh, we did the China Club in Chicago. So that was cool too. But I mean, Be Real's right. We, when we sold out Brixton Academy in London, I mean, there ain't not, there, you ain't never seen Funk Dubious fans like you've seen them in London. No shit. Yeah, in London they got their own. They got their own. They got this. This. They got their own funk dubious London. You know these cats. They got. They, they got their own thing. Right. So you know, and they're like, "Yo, man, we're funk dubious, we, but we represent y'all." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, right." You, you, you know. You, you know. Let me ask you. You looking back now. You and know. in Paris they got another funk dubious group or crew I seen out there too. So, you know, right. I, I mean, I'm just saying, man. I, I just, yeah, I'm. You know. You looking back now, you know, I'm 53, and if I'm correct, you said you were 50. And you look back now, do you think like, wow, we had such a huge audience outside of the U.S.? Do you ever look back and say, man, we probably have more fans outside of the U.S. than in the U.S.? I, I, yeah, yeah, I do believe that because, I mean, when I go to Europe, I'm in London, yeah, it gets stupid. Yeah, okay. and here, I hear people are more, you know, because America, they spoil. They got all these, you know, good dope artists, and, and, and that's cool. And if I'm, in the, if I'm in the list, they happy. They are happy. But as far as the same attention they give in Europe, no, of course not. You know, I mean, come on, man. I just came from Mexico City, man. I was, they treated me like a god out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, come on, right. man. These people, you know, and these are like smart I mean, the the way they portray Mexico and America is not what you see when you go over there. I mean, they it's like New York. I mean, they got everything we got out here. Apple yeah. Store. I mean, I, Gucci underwear. I bought all that in Mexico City. They got Gucci store in Mexico City. You know what right. I'm saying? So, I mean, it's like 
Mexico City is dope. It's dope. Well, see, see, the well, only thing I, is trippy is when you go through the traffic, how they avoid the the people in the streets, man. How they do that shit, I don't know. Yo, we was we was cutting people like this close, and I was like, yo, my man, you didn't see that girl, and they're like, doobie, that's how they do it out here. Stop, stop, you you bugging. <laughs> I'm like, nah, you can't do that. There's people in the streets. You don't. Really, that's how it is in Mexico, Papa. That's, I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I'm just, I'm learning, man. I'm learning. So I apologize, man. I apologize. I'm learning. No. It's dope out there, right? No, the, yeah, the, it's sick. The reason why I asked you about the fans outside of the U.S. is because a lot of artists that are barely coming up, they, they're too busy. They're from L.A., but they're trying to impress L.A. And I always think, bro, think of the international market. Because because uh, many times they might not give a shit about you out here, and then somebody from Europe may say, "Hey man, we love your shit." Let's, let me but you gotta out. understand though, you have a lot of Latinos in here. They got their hands, they got their um, irons in too many things, man. It, it, you, you know, um, there's a lot on their plate. They want to be rappers, they want to be actors. They they're, they're, then there's this um, crowd that's in between that. And that's how they're able to go back and forth. You know, um, I didn't come here to be a actor or a movie. I came here to do music. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But I see if people can cross over, hey, that's cool with me. Do your thing. But that's not us over here. We just do hip hop and we just rap over here. And, you know, we're music we're musicians over here. Right. But, um, you know, like I said, I've seen that. But I've also seen how it's been, been exploited, how they play with people's emotions, uh -huh. how um, people have been left dry, how um, um, false promises have been yeah. presented you know what i'm saying um i've seen disrespect you know what i'm saying all that negative you know and um i have nothing to do with that i have nothing to do with that right away i'll tell you right. that right now okay you know so i'm not here you know like i said um i'm not here i've never had beef with nobody i'm just finding out now that dos effects had beef with us and under 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 my you know, under my be knowing, so I didn't know this. I know we're gonna. I get didn't to know that. this. You know what I'm saying? Right. I thought of all this time we was cool. So someone told me that through the grapevines, and you know, who knew? I okay, you know, who knew? let's get into that a little bit. Okay, and I was sharing with you earlier that the first time I've heard of you, I heard you rap. Let me say that was right. on on the House of Pain album. Right. So right, right. and I remember I was in my bands at the time, and I put in the cassette. That's yeah. when I bought the cassette. So I'm bumping it, and then all of a sudden, I hear this. I hear somebody. I like what the hell? So I opened up the cassette package, yeah. and I'm looking up that title of the song, and I'm looking for featuring Das Effects, right? Because you I thought it was Das. You thought it yes. was probably Crazy Dre's of books on there, right. right? Okay. So I started asking around. I said, hey, Right, right. Who's this guy? Who's no, this you're guy? not the only one. Listen, man. Um, at, at, at a time when I was when I when the Funkiest came out, uh -huh. um, a lot of people made that mistake you know what i'm saying okay comparing me to you know das and I, i'm a big das fan you know what i'm saying um when i rapped the way i rap the style came from a demo called the come off okay okay mugs did it and um it was a sick ass song we never recorded it why i don't know and uh, i remember um everybody started switching up their voices you know what I'm saying? I was there when Muggs, you know, told B, hey, rap like this. I was there when um, Melo switched his style up. You know what I'm saying? And did River Cubano for Tony with Tony G and right. switched it up like this. Um, the influence was there. Cold Crush, Fantastic, Ram Z, you know, Grand Wizard Theodore, DST, Grandmaster Flash, yes. et cetera. Um, African Bombada. Malcolm McLaren, etc. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And we had all that influence. When Sin used to pick me up from my mother's, he had was driving a BMW, and at that time there was only cassette tapes. So to carry your cassette tapes, he'd have this suitcase, and he'd have all the hip hop. And when I noticed that he had ultra magnetic MCs, oh, ego tripping, ego tripping. No, Papa Large. Okay. When Papa Large came out. I was, I ain't going nowhere. I knew, because music is how I knew how to stay with you. I knew how to identify with that. You know what I'm saying? Um, my mother, you know, she had her black girlfriends from um, um, the hospital uh -huh. and I would go over, you know, their houses and I'd go through their records. And her girlfriends would have Run DMC, right. Houdini, 
and I'm and and you know and and you know they loved me. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, man, I was this little Puerto Rican kid with a fro, and you know, had curly hair and stuff like that. I was a little cute kid or whatever, right? Anyways, so the next thing you know, um, the influence that 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 like I said that was there in on Cyprus, on Cyprus. That's what brung that out of me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, and B was always on the hill with a new rap always spitting you know what i'm saying so it was i wasn't in competition with b i was writing with him you know what i'm saying and when you write with someone it's a whole other different thing brother right because um he's finishing your sentences and you're finishing his sentences you see what i'm saying yeah yeah and the, you the know, vibe and the chemistry yeah there. b had this funk that i loved man and um he had this song called the funk dubious so he, it would go, who knows, the, who knows the funk when I'm coming on the peace mode, son? I think you better pass up the blaster because I'm not the soft one. You better get off the one or I'm going to baseball bat you. You see how he stretched it? Right. That's when I saw when he was stretching stuff. And so then, then I was like, oh, I see what you did. And, and then he goes, do not violate or I will stick you, scalp you, pop you, drop you, then smoke you. And then I wasn't going to do that rap because that pop you, drop you, smoke you, that's B style. Right. You see what I'm saying? I don't do that. I'm more of a, you know, when I throw my, when I throw Son Dope's voice, it's a more, it's like a, a, something opens up in me. You know what I mean? Like you can that's hear dope, it in my voice. Bro. You see I what like I'm that. saying? Of course. So I don't, I can't explain it, but that's it. Now, yeah. now, now that voice around what year would you say that came out? Ninety one. Okay. Ninety one. Okay, ninety one. And then that's when you said, Okay, this is it, right? Ninety ninety one. It's in between. Okay. I get nervous because ninety, I don't want to even think about that year. That was a crazy year, yeah. Okay. So ninety one, ninety, and that's what probably whatever I went through in ninety made me come out with that voice in ninety one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to say Beastie Boys or Ram L Z and stuff, but it wasn't any of that. It was just um, you know, like I said, when Muggs Kate came at me in the studio, um, aggressive as far as, yo, you should kick it like this, man. All right, no, 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 try it like this. I kid you not, man. He would make me sit there and do it over 300 times. I kid you not, man. I'd be like, man, I get mad and we'd have arguments and, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm remembering this stuff, man. And, <laughs> you know, Muggs, you know, he's, t you know, Muggs is strong, man. He's tough, man. Yes. I love my brother. So, and, um, yeah, it was, um, he was serious, you know, so that's it. That's the, okay, so yeah. now when that that uh, um, House of Pain album drops and people hear you for the first time, you know, at least on a on a major label, okay? Yeah, that was uh, my first, yeah. Did, did at that time, were people coming up to you and telling you, hey, what's up, bro? You sound Well, like the first time I got offended was, uh, um, remember DJP? Yeah. Paul Stewart? Mm -hmm. pa Paul oh, yeah. Stewart, uh, the, you know, I love Paul Stewart, man. He's one of, he's a good friend, you right. know, from back in the days. And he, he was going around. I remember we went to this um, show with the far side and he was managing the far side. And uh, we had just seen the artwork, the album artwork to the Funk Dubious. It was the first time we seen it. It was fresh. It wasn't on the album yet. It was just the, right. the painting. You know what I'm saying? And then when we seen the far side, and I'm, I know Fat Lip, we're best friends now, but I can say this now because me and Fat Lip are best friends. And I was like, motherfucking biters. We were just like, oh, but it was no biting. It was just that at that time I was a very competitive MC. And, you know, I was just trying, just talking the way I was talking, very competitive. And Paul Stewart was going around saying, Doobie's trying to sound like DOS FX. And I was, I took it personal, which I shouldn't have, you know, the argument was more substantial. So I, I you know, I understood that and I, I totally understood that. That was it. But when you hear our demos, when you hear the come off, when you hear love and happiness, it, you hear the doobie voice and, you know. Well, you know, it's funny because, you know, uh, uh, we did a couple of several shows with Dows FX and uh, obviously we never did any shows with you, but. I seen them perform, and then once I seen you perform, I only seen you perform actually once. Yeah. And I will say this, that I might have heard that Dawes Effects voice on that House of Pain, but I would have to say when I saw you guys perform live, I can't really say that there was a comparison. You know, I can't really say. But well, I you know what? It, it hurt me because I'm a big EPMD fan. Yeah. I'm a big Hit Squad fan. So I, I, that's the whole crew right there. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, when you got fucking Eric Sermon, 
um, you know, pushing you and Doobie at the Jack the Rapper in Atlanta. Yeah. And then you got Parrish in New York, like Doobie. And you're like, oh man, these niggas, they love me. They, I'm like, you know, then you're like, man, I, I don't think there's a beef. I just think there's just a misunderstanding or, or a miscommunication or something like right. that. But, you know, like I said, man, I, 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 like I remember, um, right, babe, when Red Man came to our show, and at the Dragonfly, I didn't expect that. And Keith, Professor Keith Murray was there. You know, you know that's, that's New York. You right. know what I'm saying? That's New York. I mean, Keith Murray, that's Crown Heights. Right. You know, Long Island to Brooklyn. You know, that's Deceps. You know, they used to carry razor blades in their mouths. And <laughs> I, re, I mean, I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, that's New York. That's Because yeah. when I'm in L.A., I'm L.A. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, I was I was raised with the blacks and the Mexicans out here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I went to Laurel Elementary, Bancroft Junior High School, Fairfax High School, almost went to Hollywood High. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, you don't get no more L.A. than that. I almost went to Belmont or Marshall. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I seen everybody. You know, they can't tell me nothing. I was there, you know, when N.W.A. was um, looking for uh, folks for their videos for Express Yourself right there on Santa Monica, right across the street from Sam Ash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With the bodybuilders. Express Yourself. <laughs> we was there. You know what I'm saying? We went to Bancroft. Bancroft is right down the street from that. And then when they did um, We Want Easy, running down the alleyways. There was no alleyways, Compton alleyways. Y'all used the alleyways on Melrose. Could, why do I know this? Because I used the, those alleyways to get to the bus stop with my backpack on my back. And I saw them there with the director and everything. And me and my friend David, who acts black, you know, the, 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 that was in my popping crew, crash crew. Um, he was like, word, they filming the video. That's dope. And, you know, M I was an MTV fans a kid at that time and um you know man i'd go over sean and brett's to go see mtv you know because you know 783 man they had why that was in the movie colors yeah remember colors and don cheeto remember the, yeah. you know the whole gang thing so you know i mean i went to fairfax man and fairfax had crips bloods and they had other gangs what we call other gangs and sometimes these other gangs were affiliated with those crips or bloods you right. see what i'm saying so we we knew all that stuff but um you know um for record shopping um a1 record finder remember um melrose and larchmont and then of course we had um cutting records right there on santa monica and fairfax and um, just um, that's it. But I remember, man, um, I would run with mugs and me and mugs would go everywhere record shopping, man, just everywhere. And, um, you, know, I, you know, a lot of people don't know. For me, I can speak for myself. It's a beautiful thing, man, to dig through records, bro. Yeah. Because sometimes you find some fucking gems. Oh, on shit. We be going, just going through the shit. We find one. And you know what? You'll be finding diamonds. Yes. And you just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking this one and I'm taking that. And um, we found a lot of, um, um, I mean, I've been record shopping with Ralph. Um, Ralph's a good record finder. Ralph is really good. Ralph M. Oh man, Muggs even tells me if I had Ralph M's beat, I'd be a millionaire. No, I'd be a billionaire. That's what he told me. Yeah, like I'd be a billionaire. He was just trying to be, um, be funny with it because Ralph, man, he has... Um, these records man that man nobody got this shit man he just he he's just and i would try to take you know i wasn't trying to take him i was trying to just borrow his mixtapes because ralph makes the dopest mixtapes man i mean they're so dope but it, you know you know if, if it's too dope he'll keep it away from me because i don't return them i apologize <laughs> i'm sorry i said the truth i'm sorry ralph i'm returning mixtapes okay I know, I know, I like to keep this stuff, man, but they're so dope, you know, and people steal them from me. So, sorry. Sorry about that, man. Apologize. No, it's, it's, it's all good, brother. It's you know, and Mark's the same way, too, because we used to do the mixtape. He used to do the mixtapes on the Task Cam. So that's right. when we started doing our, t our demos on the Task Cam. Of course. And Ralphin was the, he knew how to just put the scratches in and then come back out in them, you know, and then just put the vocals and come back out in them. We used to make this, we used to make our own mixtapes ridiculous that's fucking dope bro yeah dog i remember those days and then till tony touch yeah tony i'll bring you ain't you ain't escaping this one too and then tony um started using us for his 50 mcs until we started becoming regulars for the 50 mc stuff so that's cool too and then we started doing cornerstone i did the, the cornerstone stuff for the djs uh -huh. too so i mean come on man i mean we've been 
We've been doing this for a long time, yes. you and me, yes. man. You and me have been in the game, Tony A, for a long time, brother. Yeah. Yes. You know just what I want to just... Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for yeah. sharing that, man. What I want to do, we're going to take a 10-minute break. We're going to come right back. I want to talk about where you got your name, Son Doobie, from and how Funk Dubious came together. We good? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, everybody. Once again, you already know. Make sure you slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that my boy Don't Son Doobie... Do <laughs> we in the building. Word. Yo, we'll be back 10 minutes. Word up, man. Word up. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright. A lot of you know me, know I like to smile. And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out. Que pasa, mi gente? El padrino, Mellow Man Ace right here. This is my new joint, Walk Talk, featuring my boy Young Quicks, Oxnard's finest. Ya tu sabes, mi gente. Siga representando real hip hop aquí solamente. Keep it locked. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Got these all the way from NYC. Check out my latest EP, available now on all digital platforms. Back in Cali, baby. That's right. Check me out, Miss Gatis, at YouTube, at Instagram, at Spotify, all over. You already know it's NYC, baby. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks. Just want to let you know, I got a new single out, Down Three Times, Down 3X, featuring Baby Bash. Everywhere music is sold and streamed today. Go cop it, add me to your playlist. Let's get it. Down, down, down. All right, what up? It's your boy King Cash right here at Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up? It's your boy Trouble P here at Rodium Radio with your boy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. What? It's close. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodium Radio is live within this biatch. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? This your boy, Big Havoc. One good admiral, South Central Cartel General, and you're tuned in to Rodium Radio with my boy, Tony A., the wizard. Stay locked in. Hello, everybody. This is Rocky Padilla. And you're listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A., the wizard. Hey, what's up? What's up, my people? Hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, and shout out Rodium Radio. Much love. Thank you for having me. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks, and right now you're listening to the OG, Tony A, the Wizard, on Rodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked, subscribe, comment, hate. It don't matter, man. We get into it. It'll five stand up. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Mark Cruz. You're now tuned in to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard, the legend. Tap in. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Queenie. You're tuned in to Rodium Radio. Check my man, Tony A, the wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what it is. What's up, Pimpin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas. At Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Gia. Hey, y'all. This is Elia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio with motherfucking Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share. Can I get a moment of your time? Hey. It's your boy Lucky Sun Zoo from Hood Stocks Podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game, Tony A, the Wizard, 
Rhodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it. Don't sleep on it. Hey, H.A., stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune in to Rhodium Radio with Tony 8 the Wizard. If not, you're a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy Young Thrive right here with the homie Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm on the Rhodium Radio. <laughs> what up? It's ODM from Light of Shade of Brown. You know your daddy's favorite rapper, your mama's favorite DJ, <laughs> plus that YouTube star. You know what I mean? RBG fam. Light of Shade all day with the homie Tony A. Right here, Rhodium Radio, Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's go. What's up, y'all? This is Alia Coronado. I'm here on Rhodium Radio, and you can tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Raz Kaz, and you are tuned into Rhodium Radio with my big homie, Tony A, the wizard. What's up? This is Truth with Tony A, the wizard at Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel live Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. Tune in. Hey, what's up, what's up? This is Lalo KB, desde Atlanta. You're listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, you know what it is. It's your boy OG Rome, a.k.a. Mr. Everywhere, repping Road Dogs Entertainment. Make sure you tune in to Tony A. The Wizard at Rodium Radio. What up, what up? You know what it is. It's the L.A. West Coast native, the very yo. And you got to tap in with my boy Tony A. The Wizard at Rodium Radio every Wednesday and Sunday. Come on, it's your boy Isaac Palau on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. Hey, what's up? This is Lady Band. Make sure you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard, Sundays and Wednesdays. Yo, what's up? This is Jimmy from Urban Kings. Make sure you tune in to Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. This is A.O. to the Saint coming to you live from Rhodium Radio, hosted by my homeboy, Tony A. The Wizard. That's right, baby. What's up with it, dog? It's West Coast Gilly on Rodeo on Radio with the legend, Tony A. The Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is, West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Oyer listening to Rodeo Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy, Doughboy Tony. You're tuned into Rodeo Radio with West Coast legend, Tony A. The Wizard. What up? It's your boy, Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana, CA, and we right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend, Tony A. The Wizard, on Rhodium Radio, Tony Vision, on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187, above the law in the building. And you tuned in to Rodium Radio with my man Tony A, the Wizard. Blah! What's up? This is Darren Vegas. You're on Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Real West Coast hip hop history right here. Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house here at the Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard, giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo B. And you're listening to Tony A. the Wizard on Rodeon Radio. That's what's up right there. Hey, yo, what's up, man? This is Kujo the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A. the Wizard, Rodeon Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Yo, shout out to Rodeon Radio, Tony A. The Wizard, your boy Pablo Nunez right here in the studio. Be about it, people. Que onda muchacho, ahí viene este miro. King with the Black Sican and Negrito de Los Angelitos. And you're checking out that Rodeon Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Que raza, this is Wicked from the Brown Side here on Rodeon Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. You know. What up, it's your homeboy Infinite TGM, chilling with Tony A, the wizard, on Rodeo Radio. Make sure you guys go check that out.
What's good, what's good? It's your boy Spanky Loco and you tuning in to Rhodium Radio with that motherfucking legend, Mr. Tony A. You know what time it is, West. Hey, what up? This is Rebello the Dome. And this is Dominator. And we came straight from the 805 ready to slap that motherfucking meat on your grill, bitch. Rhodium Radio, <laughs> Central Coast Click. What up? What up with it? This is your boy OG Magoo, Los Angeles Airbus artist. Big chilling on site with the homie Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. All gas, no brakes. Let's get it. Man, you now listen to LA Icon, man, right here live with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. Blah! What's up, what's up? This is Essa Daz, the Spanish Fly, with that reintroduction right here on Rhodium Radio with my boy, the wizard, Tony A. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's Spanish Fly MC, Big MOC, Mr. Most MC, on the Rhodium Radio Show, baby, with Tony A, the Grand Wizard. Let's walk. Johnny D from Spanish Fly on Rhodium Radio. You're one and only deal with the giant Cheeto. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Trish Toledo, and I'm over here with Tony A. at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Blanca. Bobby D. presents Uncle Smith's Army. Chilling right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A., the wizard. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on YouTube. What up, West Coast and all hip-hop fans? This is your girl, Violet Brown. And I'm here with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, this is Daniel Jones, the D to the motherfucking G Media Clips. Here with your boy, Tony A. the Wizard on the Rhodium Radio Show. Check, check, one, two, one, two. This is Roger Live, and you are in tune to the sounds of Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio West Coast. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 218, and I brought out the Tres Generaciones. So once again, uh, let me give a big plug to my boy, SF40s. Uh, once again, if you want to buy his record, I hit him up on SF40s on Instagram, and he will ship it to you. Once again, his ad will be on Sunday uh, with my other special guests, and I brought out... Today, I'm drinking the Coronas. Today, I usually I drink Modelo Pacificos, but without further ado, once again... Sandubi. <laughs> I'm okay, man. Love you guys, man. Word up, man. No, uh, yeah, just in man. case people are thinking I'm not hospitable, I did ask you if you would you like to drink. Yeah, man. He 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 offered me, man, but I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it uh I'm gonna keep it California sober over here on this side, man. Everything's cool. I mean, I just came back from Mexico with um the Mexicans. Talk to us about that. Yeah, Raz Caz, <laughs> Epto, six syllables. And um, I got to kick it with uh, Control Machete's um, yeah. DJ Toy at his studio and Patos, the MC, at their studio. And they introduced me, you know, to a lot of uh, these other artists they're working with um, in the Mexican rap genre. Yes. So um, I want to give a big shout out to you guys. Big Toy, DJ Blunts, and um, Hevu. Um, thank you once again. Th those were the DJs out there. And I got to meet the number one DJ in Mexico, DJ at Azteca. So, really? Yeah, DJ Aztec, who's the DJ for the Mexicans, too. So they're real cool guys, man. Have you met them, T? No, who, who's that? The Mexicans? Yeah. The, yeah. That's yeah, my they're boys. Mad. yeah, I love them, man. Yeah. And Sinful, man, he's one of the dopest MCs. I, man, those guys, forget it, man. You know, 
I mean, I love Spanish rap. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jack is another good um, MC on that too. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. No, yeah. I know somebody might get mad at From me. Psycho Realm, excuse me. But, yeah, but but, but I'm my opinion. Okay, my opinion. I interviewed the Mexicans here. Uh, my boys from the Harbor area from Long Beach. I think. Please don't get mad at me, guys. My opinion. Sinful is the best to ever do it in Spanish. That's just my opinion. And, and, I, and I, I gave him his flowers when he was here, and I, t- I told him that I think when he did that song, La Plaga, that, uh, uh, that he set the standard, bro, that that's the blueprint right there. So much I, love, I, I, I ain't got nothing to say, man. That brother, is, I, to this day, I can't figure him out. He's one of the dopest. Yeah. Insane, man. It's just the way he spits. It's like like Migos, man. It's yeah. just, you know, it's like a fucking Uzi rapid <laughs> fire, you know, like automatic fire. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, you know, and Jack the same way too. And, you know, man, I just, I, I mean, I tried to rap in Spanish. I can't do that shit, man. I, I, you know, come How on. How did you man. like the food out there? Oh, don't do that to me, man. <laughs> the food in Mexico, they keep it quiet. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. They don't say nothing to us, man. They keep it quiet and it's the best, man. They don't say nothing and, and it gives you more, and that's years to your life. Yes. They don't even tell you that. But I was eating, I'll tell you what I was eating for breakfast every day. The onions, the, the scrambled eggs with the steak, every day with the De La Hoya coffee. Yeah. I was doing that every day. And then at nighttime, we was going to this um, place. It was all seafood. It was um like mariscos. Oh man, but I mean they do seafood differently out there. They have their right. own sauces. They don't have the sauces ain't available in the states. Right. It's right. only out there. Right. So I was eating the you're eating lobster and shrimp. Like man, I right. couldn't. But and then the avocado. I mean the avocado yeah. is different from the guacamole, and their guacamole has everything: mango, pi- pineapple, um, onions, tomato, everything, and the um. The, t- the avocado out there is so big and when they sprinkle it with the salt it, come on man forget <laughs> it you know what I'm saying but it's but that's not but I don't want you to think that's their diet that's all that's in their um, menu they have way more other stuff but they're, they don't keep, keep it quiet right right yeah they keep it hush I, I wanted to make a quick correction because you said de la olla coffee I'm sorry. No, no, I mean, no. I don't know it, how to it, say it. It's no disrespect. It? It's no disrespect because, uh, but I'm I not like trying to, help to disrespect. No, it's you Cafe know that. de la Olla. Doobie means no harm. You know, no guys, harm. me, it's me, Doobie, jeez. No, it's, it's all oh, good. Because you know, yeah, I don't want people to say, de la Olla has coffee? No, no, no. What's it called? Uh, Cafe de la Olla. What he said. <laughs> so that's what's up. Yay, that shit. Hey, I'm kidding. That shit's fire. It's it bussing. It is. That it shit is, is bussing, yo. So that's it, man. And your favorite soda now is? Oh, oh, um, uh, Manzanita. Manzanita. Manzanita, yeah, yeah, from Mexico. Yeah, that shit is bomb. And and there's two types. One, it's regular and with pear. So I was there. But they had me drinking tequila, fucking mezcal, all the time I was there, man. You know, I'm there. You know, And they got these spots in Mexico that you could just pull up. You don't even have to go in with your car. And they give you your drink. And you could just order your shit and just roll out. Hell yeah. It's dope. Drive drunk. Yeah. And we was chilling. <laughs> and I was ordering food. It was like sick. And uh, um, um, tri-tips oh, with the own sauces. But once again, they're not available in the States. They're only available out there. And you eat it like it's candy. Right. Just like nothing, man. It was insane, bro. The food is out there is dope. Sorry about that. I was changing pe- I was changing my dollars to pesos every day. Yeah, dog. So sorry about that. But Mexico is the best. You could just catch a cab and just take a car. Oh, and they got online um, um, for everything. Because I know you guys have dispensaries out here. They don't have dispensaries in Mexico. They, they have online delivery. So, but they got everything. Not and they got, they got the hard shit. I don't fuck with the hard shit, but they got the hard shit too. I don't, you know, but hey, whatever. You know, right? Then, it's crazy. Knock on your door. Señor, it's legal. La marijuana. Yeah, it's legal. I couldn't believe it. De todo. I couldn't believe it. I was right. like, what the fuck? Hey, bro, this is scaring me. Hey, brothers. Even Razcast. I looked at Razcast. We looked, we looked at each other like, it's the real shit out here, dog. Couldn't <laughs> believe it, man. It was dope, man. That's yeah, dope, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was dope. Oh, and the tacos, though, out there, they got the ones you could dip out there. Even the KFC is better out there. The dude at the KFC, he heated up the barbecue sauce and he heated up the gravy for me. Oh, no shit? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It's because it's Mexican chicken. 
Oh, it's good. It's fried chicken. He texts me crispy. Well, the chickens are Mexican. KFC, though, right? right? Fuck right. it. I was looking for Popeyes. There was no Popeyes. I couldn't no, find no Popeyes. Popeyes. No Popeyes. I'm Popeye. just saying. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> let's bring... I'm glad you shared that, my brother. Uh, okay, let's get back to uh, Funk Doobie. Uh, uh, how did you... Well, Sun Doobie. I'm sorry. How did you come up with that name? I know right. your name had always been Sun. Yeah. In the beginning, I didn't like Doobie. Okay. Because it was, I was just called Sun in the beginning. Just Sun. And okay. my first... My name... My rap name was just J-Sun with the U in the Sun. Okay. Or Dr. Il-Sun. You know, um, that was my name, Dr. Il-Sun. Okay. You know, but I dropped it all together and I'm glad I did because now B-Rose, Dr. Green Thumb and, you know, it, everything worked out. And, um, you know, um, yeah, that was it. And then that was when B came up to me. And you know me, man. I'm not going to argue with B because B has a talent for knowing what's what. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So I told B, I said, B, what's up? What do you want me to do? He goes, hey. He's like, it's like this. Hey, nigga, you, you got Funk Doobie. So I gave you the song, right? Yeah. Just be Sun Doobie. Just take, just take Doobie and just put it at the end of Sun. You're Sun Doobie. And I go, okay, so we're the group Funk Dubious. The song is now not the song anymore. We take the title from the song and use it for the group name Funk Dubious. Right. Okay, so that verse I kicked you, that's the first verse to the song Funk Dubious. So right. you know. <laughs> and the, you, by the way, I kick it, you know B wrote it. You know what I'm saying? But I memorized it and I was, you know, kicking it like that. Because um, some songs... You know, B, man, B would just ace them, man. B would just one take them. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. just has, you know, B's just talented like that. Yeah. And I would do the same thing too. And Melo's the same way too. You know what I'm saying? Melo, he, he has his moments. You know, we all to do. You know, so, but, um, you know, um, that's when I became Sun Doobie. And that's when, um, you know, Epic Records, you know, they wanted, you know, they, I started to see it on the bio and they started to uh, make glossies with, our, with okay. my name like that. So now uh, uh, three members of Funk Dubious. One, I'm one third of Funk Dubious. I'm R the one third right. of it. Yeah. Okay. Sun Dubie, Tomahawk Funk. And DJ, Ra Ralph, DJ Ralph M, the Mexican. Okay. Yeah. So you had already known Ralph. How did you meet, you know, Tomahawk Funk? T-Bone uh, T -T I met on the hill. And um, T Bone was T Bone was running with Little Willie, and they were gang banging. But so we wanted to get T out of that. When you say on the hill for the people that may not know, oh, I'm sorry, on Cypress Ave. Okay, you know uh, Southgate, Southgate. Right. I'm sorry, guys, Southgate, <laughs> Southgate, guys. All right, you know it's a, 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 a the east of Westmont. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. And um, B was living at Westmont at the time, and you know B was out there doing his. You know, um, he was affiliated with that stuff, doing right. uh, that affiliation with that. And, you know, man, I was innocent. So they were teaching me all this crazy shit. And I was like a kid in a candy store, bro. And, I, I, you know, I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know you could do that. And they taught me all that. So right. you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was like a pig in shit, man. I was happy. You was yeah, like yeah, I was, I was in slop, man. Yeah, I like yeah. that shit. That's yeah, yeah, dope. I was happy, man. And then, you know, man, because it helped, it helped my b-boyism. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I'm a b-boy. At the end of the day, I'm a b-boy. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. You know, um, you know, man. Um, we we ruffled we ruffled a couple feathers and, and stuff like that. But man, it was all for the sake of good music, man. You right. know what I'm saying? And I love B because B will let me know if it's whack. It's whack, and I won't put it out. And, and you know what? Because Solo said, we don't do corny, we don't do goofy, we don't do whack. So See, we don't and, do and I'm that. glad you said that because I do think we need more people like that that are not going to be yes men, but are going to be straight up with you. Like, for an example, let's just say that you're a guy named Joe Blow and I'm producing you. No, no, no. I don't play with emotions. I know what you're right. saying. Yeah, we don't play with nobody's emotions. Right. right. We're not going to just say, yeah, it's cool. Why not just yeah. do it? No, hey, bro, that's not working. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's hard because I, I know what you're saying. Because you know, hey man, I'm a human. At the end of the day, I'm still a human being. You right. know what I'm saying? But listen, if someone tells you, hey, hey, listen, Doobie, um, uh, I know what you're hearing on the radio is popping right now, but it doesn't fit you. That's not how you should be rapping. Right. And you know, it seems like what you've been doing all this time has been working for you. You should need to stick to that. And just leave it and don't try that new shit they trying to do. You know, um, I've done it and it hasn't happened to me and I've been successful at it, but I'm not going that route. I'm going to keep it original with the same style I've always been with. And I'm going to keep it, you know, Sun Doobie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I've seen the reason why I say that, because some of my greatest rappers have tried that route and they sound terrible. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not going to say no names, but I remember uh, one of my favorite MCs from the Bronx 
tried to rap that skibbity skibbity style and it didn't sound right on him. And I said, and, and I, I didn't try to tell him that it doesn't sound right on him. I tried to tell someone else to tell him that, you know what I'm saying? Right. And they're still trying to, you know, do that. And I try to tell people, leave that with the young folks because their youthfulness matches that you're a little older, you doing that. It don't look right. It just don't, you know what I'm saying? You kind of a little too old for that army jacket. You know what I'm trying to right. say? <laughs> and, and that's it. That's all I'm just saying, man. Come on, man. Come on. That's dope. That's Come on. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, sometimes there's a point in life when you, when you, when you become that man, when yes. you just decide that you just don't want to do that childish shit no more. Yes. You know what I'm saying? No, you're right. And you kind of look at yourself in the mirror because you can't believe it's you because you were, you, you acted a certain way all this time. And, um, you, it's kind of a weird thing, you know, because it's your maturity taking over you and you kind of appreciate it because you're going, Hey, um, I, I, I see the bigger picture. I see the value and the quality, you know, and what I'm doing. So, you know, that's, dope, man. that's it, man. You know what I mean? So I like that, man. So yeah. <laughs> okay. 1991 yeah. Cypress Hill drops their debut album. Yeah. 1992 house of pain drops their album. You come out on one of their songs. Oh, okay. best, best um, year, man. Amazing year. Amazing year. 1993. Everlast puts me on his shoulders all the time when I do House in the Rising Sun. Get it, House and the Rising Sun. sun. So, get That's it. Dope. So, That's dope. That, that, you know what I mean? So, at that time, and, um, you know, Lito had gave, gave me one of his dopest beats, the funkiest, and Muggs just did his thing on it and uh, forget it. And at that time, um, Ralph and Muggs were together like this, and they were doing a lot of stuff, and Ralph was hanging with Everlast a lot, too. And um, we were go using the a studio at Paramount, you know, the, the movie uh -huh. studios. So I couldn't believe we were recording that at a movie studio for just a, a rap uh, album. And um, I couldn't believe that, and, and, and uh, it was a good feeling coming out of there. Well, I did the first album at Image, Image Recording Studios, uh -huh. and that was owned by the curly hair dude guy from Fame. Remember the guy oh, in the shit. wheelchair? Yeah. Remember the, the the wheelchair guy from Fame? He owned that, and uh, I used to see David Hasselhoff in and out from Baywatch just come. Damn. He would do it because he's a big um, celebrity in Germany. That was a uh, Night Rider. Huh? Yeah. Knight yeah, Rider. Michael Knight. Remember? Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Remember Turbo Boost Kit? Remember that was the, the days, remember? It was all mysterious. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what I'm saying? So those were the days, man. I love it. Remember the A-Team? I mean, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going back. B.A. Uh, Baracus. Los Angeles television and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that was it. And and like I said, man, when I when I... When Muggs is the one who put me in front of 10,000 people, and that was the Soul Assassins tour. That was when um, we were in, in, in Costa Mesa, no, Mesa, Arizona, and I knew I was going to be okay. I ain't going back to no nine to five. After I saw that, it was Buck subway. Yeah, it was just <laughs> you know selling funk dubious t shirts, and it was just the merchandise. They just gave me a merchandise. I had the the merchandise deal, the publishing deal, all that shit was within the eight weeks, and it, it, it my head was spinning. And wow. you know, you know, I was signed to Epic and Ep being signed to the Michael Jackson's label, right. Funk Dubious, um, OJ, and not just that, but. Um, Epic, Coach Chillin. He worked on Coach Chillin with Warner Brothers. I love Coach Chillin because I love all that Master Ace, Craig G, um, Big Daddy Kane, Bismarcky, and um, you know, um, every all that, uh, you know, all yeah. that stuff. Exactly. Roxanne Shante. Roxanne Shante. You know, I don't get, I don't say her enough because she's one of my favorite female MCs, and I don't have a lot of female, you know, favorite female MCs. Yes, I know. But I got my favorites. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Hurricane G. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, I love me some Hurricane G. Or you know, um, like I said, there's some, there's some pretty, there's even LA um, female MCs that don't even have deals that I've seen them perform. They're sick out here, bro. Yeah. You know, and even now the um, the Latinas, um, I've seen the Mexican women. They're about, they're doing um they're doing verses yes it's insane bro so I, that's what i'm trying to say but listen man listen man because i told toy this from Joe machete about mexican rap and i was telling him about american hip-hop yes and i was and i and i understood that because i understood that agenda you know and i was trying to tell him i was like hey man listen man don't push it so hard where you burn bridges with it mm. because it's gonna get there 
Just don't push it. It's going to get there. Trust me, man. I've lived long enough on this planet to know that. Just have patience. It'll get there eventually, yeah. but it'll get there. Trust me, it will. Yeah. And I try to tell him that because I know he's aggressive. You know, you, people get hostile. You know, they want that. They got that vision. They want it out there already. It's going to get there, man. Yeah, it'll get, it'll there. get there. Trust yeah. me. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Funk Dubious album debut comes out 1993. Okay. I remember the listening party is in New York. Okay. And uh, Leaders of the New School um, uh, perform. A lot of people don't know Leaders of the New School. Uh, Dinko D, Charlie Brown, and Buster Rhymes perform yes. at our um, at our um, listening party. Um, Buster Rhymes comes up to me. He, he he's he's I, I I I'm of such a fan I can't even speak. So, right. and it, it's a it's um it's a it's like a porno party. So that it's like, you know, I was known for throwing these parties that if I threw them now I'd be locked up like Ron Jeremy man that's it but I'm not gonna say that again man that's it I'll probably only time I'll say that in once okay cool that's it right Dave all right yeah let's move on trying to throw a shoe at me yeah let's move on my baby ain't gonna stab me and stuff so that's it man but that's it and I I can't believe I got away with all that and you know what I didn't know what was going on it was just that the industry um you know they were having fun with me that's it okay your your first thing go bow wow wow Okay. Uh, okay. It, it drops. Okay. I remember T Ray. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, before I tell you, or before I ask my question, I remember I was in a studio. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, it was probably North Hollywood. I was in a studio out there. It might have been Burbank. I'm not sure. But the box. Remember the box? Okay. Where, where you can call and order the video and pay? I or, remember that. Yeah. Okay. Video music box. Okay. Yeah. You could order and call every time. Well, we were taking a break. And that video was over and over. People were requesting it. Yeah. Okay? That's what I heard did. about. Wow, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's my thing. My question is, when it dropped, what was the response that you were getting? When Bow Wow Wow dropped, um, we were thrown on tour right away. We were like thrown on retail. Read it immediately. Epic threw us on in the, in the uh, we started, uh, um, we were in Atlanta and a Muslim woman comes up to me. And she says she likes my song, but she has that thing around over her head. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't, you know, I was like, I just said, thank you. you and mean, try to be the, respectful. The, the, yeah. Oh, the yeah. And she says that there's a radio show because there's a lot of black colleges in Atlanta. So, mm-hmm. you know, they have radio shows out there. And she said, would I like to be a guest? And I said, yeah, sure. Because, you know, I had to single out. Ooh, dee, ooh. Guess who's there? George Clinton. From Parliament. Oh. Yeah, I kid you not. And I'm rocking the Bow Wow Wow hat. You know how God, I mean, you know how the universe puts things together. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I couldn't believe it. I get, I'm I like, my, my, my skin is just, you know, goosebumps just talking about it, right? And it's George Clinton, man. And you know George, he looks crazy. He's got the wig on. With right. the, he's got the 951 gazelles. You know, there's right. dope ass ones. You know what I mean? The funky ones, right? The, yeah. the ones that blend into the bleed into the pink and the baby blue. And I'm just like, I can't even breathe, man. It's like you can't even, you know, like you feel it in your like neck. Of course. You know what I'm saying? And and I just like, George, I, I, just, I love you, man. I can't, I just like, and like, hey, man, I like what y'all doing, man. I see what y'all doing. I see what's going on here. I see, I see. And I just, uh, he just takes the bow wow wow off my head and he puts it on his head and he keeps it. I let him keep it. That's it. I remember that. That's yeah. a fucking beautiful moment. Right yeah, there. man, right there. And um, I guess, um, um, the college or the university is in with, I guess, the, the mosque or the Muslims in that local area. And um, it was really cool. And they brought us food and stuff like that. And we signed, they made us sign everything, man. They made us sign everything. That's dope. That's so, yeah. That's crazy, right? Oh, that shit was crazy. <laughs> now, crazy. Now, for a young artist that may be watching, you know, I'm going to ask this for them. When your single comes out, you're thrown on a tour, you're traveling. Uh, you, you're performing in front of thousands of people. Do you ever feel that at one point it might have been too much too soon? I'll be honest with you. It was overwhelming. It was. It was. It was times where you look. You you, you do so many shows. You tour so much. You don't know who you are when you go into that hotel room and you look in that mirror, and you stare at yourself for a long time because you can't believe you did all that out there. Right. And it messes with you because you don't want to take away from his glory too. Right. And he shares his glory because you see how he shares it with you when you do your thing. 
Right. You see what I'm saying? So you kind of feel guilty. It messes with you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you know, they put me in so many, they put me in places in, in Europe, in Russia. I could say, I could, I know rappers haven't been there. I, it was just funk dubious. And I know they put me there for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, and, and um, the vibes, um, you know, you don't talk about the dreams you get from the hotel rooms. You don't talk about all the stuff you see. You don't talk about um, fucked up shit, you know, that you got to keep quiet when you get back here. You know what I'm saying? Because they keep it quiet over there. They don't talk about it on the news. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, you know, when you see... 12 year olds prostituting themselves in the streets yeah it's fucked up man you see a mother with her family begging for change it's fucked up man you know that shit touch that that fucks with me you know especially when you do it on my watch and me and him are close you know what i'm saying right right come on man don't do that on my watch you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. that's it and 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 um <clears throat> you know the love the love, the perfect love that 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 is out there from the fans that right. they give to the people is there, man. I mean, um, when people are out there singing "Bow Wow Wow," the feeling is insane. When you got a bunch of London people from London singing "Funkiest" or singing "Lost in Thought" or singing "Wop Baba Loop or singing anything, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't care what it is, you know what I'm saying? Or they like your song or your verse from Diamonds and Guns, or they like your verse from uh, another, or from Mi Vida Loca, you know what I'm saying? Man, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember how the Mexicans was in Mexico City. Ese es son dubi. Tu no sabes que este, you know, recuerda este, you know, and, and I remember how Toy was introducing me to everybody, and, you know, you know who this is, you know who this is in Spanish, and I'm, and I, I mean, hey, I was telling them, I felt weird, like, hey, man, you don't have to say that, man, I'm, you know, if they know me, they right, know me, if right. they don't, they don't know me, it's all good, man, you know what I'm right. saying, and, and um, at the end of the day, we're all beautiful human beings, so, yeah. yeah. You know, now let me ask you this, because I'm hoping that, and I'm checking my time, I'm hoping that. Um, <laughs> I, are we going over time? No, 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 no. We, we can stay up all, all fucking night. Here's my thing. I would like for you to come back for a part two eventually, okay? Because I, I, we haven't even touched on. You have four albums. Okay? I don't know. To, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, Tony. I, 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 of course, man. Come on, man. Jeez, T. I time, know. I know. Up, he's got to drink next time, at least a little bit. No, nah, man. Listen, T. Listen, the only reason I don't want to take away from my personality because, listen, T, man. All good. Like, like I said, man, um, you know, we Latinos, man. Um, I cried when I came back from Mexico, man. It taught me a lot, man. And, and uh, it, it ta I'm, I'm thankful and I'm grateful for what I have here. You know, um, I wouldn't have what I have if it wasn't for you, T, my lady the people of Los Angeles and everything like that, man. I really do mean that. And there's only brighter days ahead of us. Yes, sir. So Absolutely. <laughs> Ain't that good? Ain't Absolutely. that good for us? So Absolutely. I love all that. And um, like I said, I want to give a big shout out to DJ Ralph M, who I love with all my yes. heart, soul, and mind. And I love um, T-Bone, you know, who's up in there in Seattle taking care of his family. Of course, Funk Dubious is always forever. And um, I got to say what's up to Muggs. I love you, you fuck, my brother. And um, Be Real, you fuck, I love you too. With that good ass weed, you know what I'm saying? Out there, um, um, you know, you know, the, he you know, I love how he shares his glory. And um, Sin Dog, man, I, I, I can't say enough about Sin Dog, of course. And uh, sh Share us that Sin Dog story from San Diego. Oh Delicious. man, uh, we was at the Soul Assassins tour and they rushed the stage. They, they, we, we were fighting, man. I can't believe I don't fight. I used to when I was young, Doobie. I'm old, Doobie now. I'm more <laughs> mature. I don't do that stuff. I know, I know. And, that, and I'm just a peaceful person now. But when we were in San Diego, I remember how they tried to rush us. And um, I don't know who tried to rush us, man. It was some e rickets I mean, whatever. Oh, man. shit. They, I mean, you know, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just, you know, man. <laughs> You know, hey, that's an old school word. I don't even I don't, know if this generation even nah, knows. No, man, I don't know nothing, man. I just remember they was they, uh, Sin Dog saved me. They was ready to whoop my ass, and Sin just picked me up with one arm. I was so light, you know, I'm skinny, man. So he just picked me up with one arm, put me back on the stage, and I just remember a lighter hit him in the in the neck, and that was it. I, I just. You know, but it didn't do shit to Sin. Sin, at the, he was like, you know, Sin's like a Terminator, man. He's like a, yeah. he's like steroid strong. Like, I mean, he doesn't do steroid, but I'm just like, he's, <laughs> he's like, like you would think he does roids. Right, Then right. his strength is like mugs, yes. you know, like the strength is like angelic. You know, it's like, cr I could crush the skull, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. So, you know, man, it, it was like, 
You know me. I'm not a big guy. I'm a little. I'm Sunduby, man. I'm the. I'm the harmful Puerto. I'm the. I'm the harmless Puerto Rican. You know what I'm saying? And they just bum rush the stage, and I just see Schoolboy, my road manager. He's a Samoan, so he's just punching away. I see B real. Everybody's mugs punching away, knocking motherfuckers out. B's knocking motherfuckers out. I mean, you know, whatever, you know, and that's it. I mean, I think so. Yeah, so, allegedly, right? So, anyways. <laughs> but it was dope, man. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God, was that the first fight on the tour? And I couldn't believe that. But, I mean, you know, how many Crips are in, 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 in San Diego? Not too many, right? right it's all right, bloods, right? right? So, right. I don't know, right? Razcast told me. Raz, you told me that. So, all right. I love you, brother. Yeah. Hey, hey, let me ask you something. And you don't have to. You don't have to because I have got mad respect for you. But I'm just kidding, man. I love all my brothers, man. No, That's all. They I know love, that. I love that Sanduby voice so much. Can you give kick, kick me one verse, bro? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm flying through the air. Flying through the, flying through the suckers. Cape flapping, blood splatting. Oh, the filthy Latin. The crazy Latin. Crack you up and also Picasso, Rocky, Draco, Madman, Malo. Your locomo, the leader of disposals. Amen, fofos, that share of Lobos, Robo. Global Nobo, that's what that's Bachete. But not them with a Shelly's blast to the belly. You know, so, I, I'm just saying. Clap. So that's how, you know, I project. You know, I, standing up, but I'm sitting down. Of I course. Mean, I, I'm just. That time when I saw you perform, you were skipping up on stage, and I was like, I oh, like when this I skip, guy. it's even better because my breath control is more. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I'll be. That's, you know, when I could do Bow Wow Wow. That shit is hard, man. That shit is hard. Okay, my brother. For, first of all, we come to the end of our interview, and I don't want to fucking end. You know, Be Real's first interview, Be, if you're watching, four hours. Oh, no, B's got stories. Bro, yeah, bro. my brother's got... Oh, my that's God. That's my brother. He's, you know... We finished a big-ass bottle of tequila together. Yeah. And then I was giving shout-outs, and I was forgetting people. And he goes, Tony, we're faded. And I'm like, I know. Okay, everybody, bye. And that was it. No, yeah, my brother's like Michael Jack. He'd, he'll disappear. Yeah, he'll be bow. No, B, he'll do a doobie. He learned that from... That was, I used to do that. Yeah, disappear. Because, you know, man, I'm, I hate to say it, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just like, uh, it's a Brooklyn thing. You know how, you know, man, in Brooklyn, man, when you go to a house party, you don't really say bye to everybody. You just <laughs> dip and everybody knows. And, you know, you, you, you pick up where you left off. You see them the next day and you just pick up where you left yes, off. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex, just, um, I forgot to ask this, but the, any, has anybody asked any type of questions? Okay, cool. Anyways, no uh, my, my brother. Thank, thank you, brother. You. Yeah. No, thank you, bro. You know, you brought me, especially when you brought up and the beat goes. No, that was it. That's what we was Ooh. raised on. Remember? I mean, dude, I remember all those days, man. And I remember, you know, going to the um, Compton Swap Me. And I remember going with Muggs and we got the um, Cypress Hill hats and we, we used to pass them out. We was the first ones passing them out to the crowd for free and, you know, doing the merchandise. And that's how we got, that's how we promoted it. That's how we got the name out. Yeah. yeah. Cypress Hill Tribe, man. Thank yeah, you, my brother. Dubious. Thank you, guys. Stay man. blessed. And we'll Word definitely up. make a part two. No, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, okay. it's an honor, man. Big shout out, Soul Assassins, Funk Dubious. Thank you, guys, man. Love you guys. Word up. And I love this new generation, the kids. Word up. Word up. Everybody, once again, uh, Sun Dubious, Funk Dubious. I uh, want to give everybody a uh, uh, shout out. Once again, uh, my boy Alex, Alex Cervantes, uh, Cervantes Enterprise. My son, these Scanlon, for helping me promote this. My boy's in Hawaii right now. Anthony, the hip hop Jedi. Once again, Sun Doobie, Tomahawk Funk, DJ Ralph M. Be Real, Send Dog, Mugs, Bobo, everybody from the whole Cypress Hill tribe, and Teresa. So, uh, much love, much respect to all you guys. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys Sunday with another special guest, part two, soon. <laughs> you crazy. You crazy. I want to get on Freaky Tales. Hey, how you doing? It's me. Okay, we're good. Eric Wright. Right? Yes. And a lot of you know me, you know I like to smile. And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental and Hollywood. Check them out. ¿Qué pasa, mi gente? Es el padrino, Mellow Man Ace, right here. 
This is my new joint, Walk Talk, featuring my boy Young Quix, Oxnard's finest. Ya tu sabes, mi gente. Siga representando real hip hop aquí solamente. Keep it locked. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Ms. Gattis, all the way from NYC. Check out my latest EP, available now on all digital platforms. Back in Cali, baby, that's right. Check me out, Ms. Gattis, at YouTube, at Instagram, at Spotify, all over. You already know it's NYC, baby. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks. Just want to let you know, I got a new single out, Down Three Times, Down 3X, featuring Baby Bash. Everywhere music is sold and streamed today. Go cop it. Add me to your playlist. Let's get it. Down, down, down. <laughs>